Welcome back to another Agent Zero release video. Today we are releasing version 095, and it contains one great feature we've been working on for quite some time, and that is secrets management. This is a crucial feature for anyone who wants to connect Agent Zero with external services, because now the agent can manage your credentials and other secrets in a secure way without ever exposing them to the LLM provider or to the chat interface. Before we jump to the updates, let me remind you that Agent Zero is completely free and open source system. You can download it, change it to whatever you want, use it for whatever you want. It is being built for you to use it for free. If you like what we built, consider joining our community on one of our social networks and visit our web agent-zero.ai where you can learn more about our project. You can learn more about our AOT token we use to power our community platform. And you can learn more about the community platform itself you can submit improvement proposals or afford others if you want to participate on the development with your ideas. And we're currently building a new API system in collaboration with Venice AI that would allow our AOT token holders to use cloud-based AI models for free privately on Venice AI endpoints with free daily API credits. So stay tuned for more updates here. Now back to the secrets management. When you go to settings, external services, secrets management, there are two sections of variables you can now edit. The first one is a variable store and these are non-sensitive variables. Here you can store any variables for your agent that are not secret. In my case, that's the host name and port of my email server and my testing email address or the URL to log in to my home heating system. The other section is secret store and as you can see, these values are masked Secret variables are only visible the first time you enter them. Once you save, they are masked and you will no longer be able to see them. But you can still update the value anytime. And these are the actual sensitive information like the password for my testing email, the username and password for my heating system. These non-sensitive variables are exposed to the agent and uh, the LLM the agent uses in plain text as you can see them here. These secret variables are represented just by their placeholders. The agent and the LLM and the LLM provider can never see the raw value of the password. The agent can of course still use the password using the placeholder and it is being replaced inside the framework just before every tool call. So the agent can use all of these passwords in all the tools including code execution tool or the browser but it will actually never see these passwords. And that is also because we replace the raw value of the password back to the placeholder if the password occurs in the code execution tool output or the browser output or basically anything that goes into the chat or the LLM history, we are automatically scanning for the password values and masking them back to the placeholder. In both variables and secrets, you can use comments starting with hashtag to give your agent additional information what is the password for, what is this section about, etc. Quick demonstration using the email example. I will just say check emails on my testing email. The agent should understand because it can see the variables from the secret store. And here we can see the code the agent generates. So instead of using the password in plain text, it uses a special syntax. So this value will be automatically replaced with the actual value of the password without the agent seeing it. And here you can see it was able to download messages from the testing email. I'm going to do one more test here. I'm going to include one of the email addresses that occurred in the result into my secret store. I'm going to tell the agent show me messages from my test email again. This should demonstrate how the secret value will be replaced in the code execution output so that the LLM cannot see it. And here it is, this is the output of the code execution tool checking the email and you can see that the LLM can never get to the raw value of the secret. And this one is actually another secret email I defined earlier here. This is also compatible with the browser use framework. Browser use has a secret management of their own, so we made it compatible and we can share our secrets 
with browser use. So here we can see our agent is passing the required secrets and the URL to the browser agent. Browser agent will open the URL, log me in, and I should be able to see the temperatures and other information from my heating system. All right, here we could see the agent inputting sensitive data into the login fields, and here we can see the agent got in. So this way, your agent can connect to all sorts of external services and API endpoints using credentials and API keys without you having to worry about exposing your passwords to LLM providers in different countries, etc. This replacement syntax is not only used for secrets, we now also use it to include files into the chat, which is our second addition to this version that the agent can now copy-paste messages without having to rewrite them in full. This is how it works. If I tell the agent to tell subordinate agent to write a long story, previously the subordinate agent, agent one, would write a long story, send it back to agent zero, and agent zero would have to rewrite the whole message to send it back to me. And uh, you can imagine if you had a chain of like four or five agents, maybe some research team, and uh, the agent at the end of the chain would write five pages of research paper, all of his superior agents would have to rewrite the whole message to send it to their superior and ultimately to me. But now you probably noticed that the second instance was very fast and that was because the agent could use the include replacement syntax and it could just include the text file of the previous message. Every tool output that is longer than 500 characters is now stored into a text file in the temp folder under the chats folder so that the agent can reference the file without having to see or rewrite the whole text. This doesn't only save time and money on tokens, but it also addresses the problem that some outputs are simply too large to fit into the context window of the agent and such information would be trimmed down and some of it would be discarded. This way we can still keep the full information in the text file and the agent has the ability to read it in chunks later or do whatever it needs to do with the file. I'm going to go through the rest of the updates just briefly. We now have a global configuration field for all light LLM models, meaning if there are model parameters you want to use in all the models across the board, like for example timeouts, you can use it in external services, light LLM global settings, and you can put them here. There is also a link to light LLM documentation on what parameters are available. Next one, custom HTTP headers for the browser agent. In agent settings, web browser model, HTTP headers, you can specify key value pairs of additional HTTP headers that will be sent with every request by the browser agent. Next one is progressive web app support, thanks to one of the members of our community, thank you. Meaning if your browser supports progressive web apps, you can open the agent zero frontend almost like a native app on your operating system. Next one is the support of JSON in extra model parameters. In settings and models, there's a box for additional parameters where you can specify parameters that are passed directly to the LLM provider. Some of them require JSON format, like for example, here, Venice parameters. So now the handler of these fields supports for JSON and also literals, depending on whether you use or don't use quotes. Next is we have changed the way we generate IDs for files, memories, and other elements inside the system. Previously, we used long GUIDs, but some large language models can have problems repeating long sequences of random characters. So that's why we made all the IDs that are used for memories, chat files, uh, attachments, and everything much shorter so that LLMs don't have trouble repeating. The rest of the updates are technical or bug fixes. There's no need to demonstrate here. That's it for today. 
for the next version 096, we are working on a memory dashboard. So you will be able to see all the memories collected by the agent and you'll be able to manipulate them. And we are also working on parallel tool calling or running jobs in the background. So as always, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being part of our community and see you next time.